Hi, everyone, and welcome to Abbey Research Reads. I am Dr. Kristen Donnelly, and today I am talking about the book Furia by Shamile Saeed Mendez, who is an Argentinian American author and has penned an incredibly powerful and enjoyable, I will say too, YA novel about a female footballer in a barrio in Argentina and the love that is part of her life um, in a whole lot of different ways, but let me get back to that. So there's a concept in publishing, uh, particularly in YA and in romance called own voices. You'll see hashtag own voices a lot on social media. And the concept is that people should get to be the ones that tell their own stories. So in the history of humanity, we have a long, long record of people who are not uh, part of a culture telling their stories for them. So the most recent kind of buzzy example is American Dirt is a story about immigration that is not written by somebody with that background. Um, you know, you get a lot of um, accusations of paternalism in this, uh, co like colonizers writing stories for the colonized. These are the ways that we often get really inappropriate uh, narratives or wrong examples of how slaves interacted, for instance, in the United States, because the only people we heard from for a long time were their owners. Um, and so, especially in the last five years, there's been a real push for diverse books, for own voices books, for stories to come from people who have um, lived experience, as it were, with these cultures. So yeah, Shamile has published a lot before this. Um, they've been largely children's books. And so if you haven't come across her before, this might be why. Furia was highlighted to me by Reese Witherspoon's book club. Uh, she has both an adult and a YA one, and this was a pick for the YA one. The summary is both incredibly simple and, um, man, just really... Um, really complex because life is. So uh, Camilla Hassan is the main character that we deal with and she lives a double life. She is an incredibly powerful and very prodigious footballer. Football is her life and her existence, but football is not an acceptable hobby or definitely not a profession for Argentinian women and certainly not poor Argentinian women. So she hides this entirely from her family. The book's kind of animating event is that her team wins the the champion, wins the right to be in the championship. Now, her brother is a very good footballer. And a lot of the book is about the fact that her brother is who the whole family is pinning their hopes on, um, except for the father is a, a complicated entity, but also that Camilla's childhood friend who, and like, honestly, boyfriend, um, Diego, now lives in in Italy and plays for Juventus, which is a, I mean, like massive international football presence. And he is good. And he is the one who made it out. And he is, is all of this stuff. Um, they all watch him and they all know. So Diego also comes back to the barrio in this, in this scenario. And he and Camilla re-spark what they once had. And the deal is that he is not somebody who wants the footballer lifestyle. He loves football. He wants to chase it and play it as often as possible. But fundamentally, one day he wants to return to Argentina. He wants to marry Camilla and he wants to, to settle down. He, once he finds out about Camilla's footballing, is incredibly supportive of it to a point, um, as much as I think he can be within the bounds of Argentinian masculinity. But there's a whole lot of other forces. Um, her father is a problem, like I said, in a whole lot of ways. The the tension of what it means to be a woman in Argentina, the political and personal dangers of being a woman in, in, in a country where women are disappeared often, especially women who work as sex workers or women who are walking alone at night. In terms of an empathy read, even if you've been to Argentina, my guess is that you probably went to the tourist spots and that living life in the barrio is not something that you necessarily think about or, or did. I've never been to Argentina. I love a lot of people, actually two of my best friends from college, spent a lot of time doing international relief work in Argentina and they loved it. Um, and I'm actually, they, neither one of them really reads fiction, but I'm going to be pushing this book at them and asking them to take a read of it and, and see if if they can even recommend me more Argentinian stories, my experience in South America doesn't go much farther south than Colombia, which is something that I'm looking to fix in my life. But I was enraptured by this book for a YA book. You know, it's it's YA particularly just because it focuses on a young woman, you know, somewhere 
I can't exactly remember how old she is, but I want to say it's somewhere between 17 and 19, like kind of that generation and that, and that age group. Um, but in terms of themes, it's not, it's not angsty. It's not, um, it's not all the boys I've loved before. It's not a YA book. It is a book about a teenager in a country that you may never visit or a life that you may never, ever inhabit. It's a quick read because it's written for teenagers and it's not laborious in any way in terms of the reading process. The emotional process may be a different ball game. There is no, Shamila does not pull any punches in this book at all. She just says, this is Camilla's life. This is Camilla's life. And I want you to spend a couple hundred pages thinking about Camilla's life and rooting for her as she tries to change it. And I, I appreciated and loved every minute. Um, alternatively, depending on what we were talking about. But anyway, gold star recommendation for an empathy read from Abby Research. Again, the book is Furia by Shamila uh, Saeed Mendez. The links will be in the show notes as they always are. If you've read International YA, I say international as an American. If you know of good YA books about not American teenagers, I want to read them. Please, please, please hit me up in the show notes and let me know what I should be looking at. Um, and who knows, maybe it'll show up on the channel. See you guys next time.